Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tonight we are previewing a series between a team that everyone thought would be here and a team that next to no one thought would be here. So I'm very excited to talk about this series because I think it's going to be a really good one. I think that there's going to be a lot of fireworks going on. Uh, two teams that are going to compete hard, have played hard um, this entire playoff run so far. And I'm just excited to get more great basketball games. So, um, I'll, we, uh, I think we'll start on the Lakers' end of the floor on offense. Um, obviously, this starts with, does Anthony Davis play more minutes at the 5 or the 4? If he's playing more minutes at the 5, I think that that probably favors the Nuggets. Because um, they just have such a good small lineup, like... With Jokic at the four, Jeremy Grant at the Jokic at the five, Grant at the four, and then like Jamal Murray, Gary Harris, Tory Craig. We saw that that was probably their preferred lineup. Uh, although Michael Porter Jr. could be substituted for Grant or Craig, um, so could Paul Millsap. But like that lineup is really, really good. Um, you've got Murray, who is just such a good shot maker and playmaker at this point like this guy has been playing like a top five point guard in the NBA for this entire playoff run and his ability to make shots and uh, make good decisions has been incredible although really he hasn't had to make good decisions because he's got the the best passing big man in the history of the NBA as his teammate so uh all all the credit in the world to Jokic because He's been incredible in this playoffs, and he's the biggest reason why they're here. I firmly believe that. Um, the Lakers are going to be hard-pressed to stop that Murray-Jokic pick-and-roll. I don't think that they can switch it because their most likely matchup for Murray is Danny Green and KCP and Rondo. And you cannot switch those guys on Jokic because Jokic will just put them in the paint and destroy them. Are they going to be able to blitz Murray? I actually think that that's possible because Danny Green has a lot of length, and if Anthony Davis is playing the five, that's a scary trap right there with Danny Green and Anthony Davis. So maybe Murray struggles to make that pass over to Jokic, but it's risky because when you've got Jokic playing four on three where it's Jokic and the three other offensive players, and Murray's taken two defenders out of it because they're forced to double him uh, and blitz him out of the pick and roll. That's where Jokic is really dangerous because this guy's a basketball genius. You can count on him to right, make the right decision almost every single time. And when he's got one, one less defender than he does teammate to worry about, that's that's that spells trouble for the opposition, and that's why the the Lakers probably can't blitz that pick and roll and blitz Jamal Murray there. So that means that they're either playing drop, or they're just taking their chances with giving up rolls to Jokic, which is not good either. I mean. Most of what we've seen from Jokic has been on short rolls because both the Jazz and the Clippers played a drop coverage. So we just saw Jokic roll to about the free throw line where he made the catch and knocked down a jumper or made the right decision. But if we're seeing uh, the guy that's matched up on Jokic hitting a hard hedge, Jokic is going to be able to get a step on him. And we haven't seen much of that from Jokic, but obviously that's a terrifying preposition as well because Jokic is a really, really good finisher at the rim. Obviously, he's not a dunker-type finisher, but he's crafty enough that he's able to make difficult shots over good post defenders. So I'd look for Jokic to have a huge series here. Uh, that pick-and-roll defense for the Lakers is just fascinating to me because I'm not really sure what they're going to be able to do in this series against... Jamal Murray and Jokic. That's just such a lethal PNR. Uh, who is going to be the matchup for Murray is a question. I think Danny Green will probably see the bulk of the minutes on him, but 
Alex Caruso did a really good job on Harden in the last series. He plays really hard, and he's able to move his feet. So I would not be surprised. I mean, he's going to get a good amount of minutes on Jamal Murray as well. It'll come down to whoever is playing the best. Uh, who's playing the best defense on Murray uh, as we get later in the series. I expect Frank Vogel to experiment a lot in game one and games one and two. That's what I would do if I were the coach of the Lakers here. Experiment a lot with our pick and roll coverage. Try to figure out what's going to work the best um, in the more important games in the latter part of the series. Because that pick and roll is one of the scariest plays in the entire NBA from any team. The Jokic Murray pick and roll, regardless of who the ball handler is. Because obviously Jokic can handle the ball pretty well too. You have Murray come and set a screen for him. They get all sorts of switches that they can just take advantage of. On the on Denver's end of the floor, I really like their chances. I think that they're going to be able to put up a lot of points on this Lakers team. Uh, LeBron's matchup is probably Gary Harris. I think. Let's see. They would we'd say Danny Green is guarding Murray. KCP is guarding. I guess KCP probably is the guy on Gary Harris. So, is LeBron on Paul Millsap or Jeremy Grant? I think probably Millsap. It depends on if they go five bigs because Millsap hasn't been great. Or if they go to um, a five-man lineup with a with two big guys, with Davis and McGee slash Howard, because Millsap... It, slash Grant, whoever they're putting that big guy on, they're going to be able to take advantage of those mismatches. Obviously, Paul Millsap is not the 30-year-old prime Paul Millsap we saw him with the Atlanta Hawks. He's older now. He's not as quick as he used to be, but he's still capable of taking advantage of having a JaVale McGee or a Dwight Howard on him. So I'm not sure that the Lakers are going to be able to go to those five-man lineups a lot. I'm sure that Frank Vogel will revert back to the JaVale McGee starting lineup that we saw for the majority of the season up until this Rocket series where Markeith Morris ended up getting the start. And Morris is an interesting guy off the bench. Like, there's so many interesting guys off the bench for this team. Kuzma, Morris, Caruso, and Rondo all are very intriguing because those are the guys that can swing a series for this team. If the Lakers are getting consistent shot-making and play-making from those guys, it's lights out because, I mean... We saw it with Rondo. He killed the Rockets. I think that game three, was it, where he finished with, like, 20 points and 10 assists? Like, that just demoralized the Rockets to see a role player for the Lakers step up and play that well. So it's that's very scary for the Nuggets. Um, the Nuggets have a great bench as well. Monte Morris is probably one of the best offensive-minded backup point guards in the game. He kind of is a shooter, or playing the Schroeder, Dennis Schroeder type role, that what Schroeder does for the Thunder. That's kind of what Monte Morris does for the Nuggets, just come off the bench, score some points, and make good plays. Schroeder's a better defender, and he's also a better shot maker than Monte Morris, but Monte's kind of a Dennis Schroeder light, and he's obviously going to do a good job in his 15 to 20 minutes off the bench for the Nuggets. They've got Torrey Craig coming off the bench, who's a perfect 3 and D wing to play alongside Jokic and Murray. Um, he's going to probably get some time on LeBron when Jeremy Grant is out of the game. Jeremy Grant will be the primary matchup for LeBron. And I think Jeremy Grant is about as good of a defender you can have on LeBron if it's not a Kawhi or a Giannis, because Jeremy Grant is a fighter, and he's a really good athlete, so... I said it in the last series against the Clippers when I was previewing the series for the Nuggets. I said, Jeremy Grant can be a swing guy in this series. He can swing the series in, into the Nuggets' favor. And I think that that's definitely potentially something that we could see again in this series because he's going to be drawing that difficult matchup with LeBron. I think he'll probably get some time on Anthony Davis too. It's a bit of a conundrum for me because if they do end up starting that uh, Dwight Howard or JaVale McGee guy, then who does Jokic or um who does Paul Millsap match up on? Are you putting Paul Millsap on Anthony Davis? That makes me nervous. Are you putting Paul Millsap on LeBron? That makes me nervous as well.
So maybe this is a series where they can play Paul Millsap off the floor with their big guys, but Millsap is also going to be really good offensively. Like, I see this being a, a shootout series, and, like, ooh, I didn't have a prediction coming into this one, so I'm kind of talking my way into a prediction, but Anthony Davis is going to have a field day as well. Jokic can't guard him. Um, Jeremy Grant, like I said, is a fighter, but Anthony Davis is just on another level. Uh, if they had... If you replace Paul Millsap with P.J. Tucker, I think that the Nuggets would be in a perfect position to win this series, but because they don't, Anthony Davis is going to be able to push Jeremy Grant around. Obviously, I've said it many times in this video already. I think very highly of Jeremy Grant on the defensive end of the floor, but he's just not as strong as Anthony Davis. And we saw P.J. Tucker have some success on Davis by forcing him to shoot those turnaround jumpers from 12 to 15 feet away. Obviously, AD was knocking him down in that series, but against Jeremy Grant, AD is going to be able to push himself around, push Jeremy around inside, and that's an advantage for the Lakers right there. If Anthony Davis can step up and be that star, if he can play like the best player in this series, that really changes the game for the Lakers. But. Do I believe that he will? No, I do not, because I've just seen him disappear too many times in the fourth quarter, and this Nuggets team has shown on many occasions that they are a second-half team. We saw it against the Clippers all three of the last games. They were down double digits in the first half, and they were able to come, out, come back and pull off big come-from-behind victories in the second half, come back from double-digit deficits to win. Like, this team can get it going in the second half. Um, Michael Malone is becoming one of the best coaches in the game. We saw him push all the right buttons in that Clippers series, make all the right adjustments at the half. Uh, if he is able to outcoach Frank Vogel, which I do believe he's a better coach than Frank. Frank made some really, really good decisions in that Rocket series that gave me more faith in him than I would have previously had before that series, but... I still think Michael Malone is a better coach just from the sample size that we've seen from him in this playoffs. He's done a really, really good job of targeting the right guys uh, with his play calls, targeting the right defenders. I haven't talked about Michael Porter Jr. yet. <laughs> I, I forgot about him, honestly, a little bit. He has the the potential to be another swing player. Who have I talked about as swing players? Um, I said Jeremy Grant. I said for the Lakers, I think I said Rondo, and now I'm adding Michael Porter Jr. to that list, and I also believe that Kyle Kuzma can be if he can give the Lakers consistent buckets off the bench, because I said it before, I'll say it again, this is going to be a shootout series. I expect both these teams to put up gaudy offensive numbers, just because... The matchups for both teams on defense aren't great, and they're going to be able to exploit a lot of mismatches. Um, I think it could be very devastating for the Nuggets if at some point they decide to put LeBron on Jamal Murray because we've seen peak LeBron and what he can do on defense. I'd love to see the Lakers try that, but obviously they won't do much of that unless it's like crunch time in the fourth quarter and Jamal Murray's got 45 points. So, they're going to probably ride it out with the Danny Green, Alex Caruso type matchup on Murray. And I'm just so fascinated in this pick and roll. I've talked about it a ton, but what are they going to do to stop Jokic? Because Jokic is so good at making the right choice. Gary Harris, Torrey Craig, and Jeremy Grant are some of the best cutters in the NBA. Denver is the best cutting team in the NBA. Them in Miami. They do a great job uh, backdoor cut, V cut, getting to the rim uh, on those cuts. And Jokic is... Such an outstanding passer. I think he's the best passer in the NBA. I've said it before in other videos. And I just think he's going to always make the right decision. He's a basketball genius. He's going to find those guys cutting. Uh, and they're also capable three-point shooters. All of those guys shoot 35% or higher, I believe. Gary Harris might not have this season. But we've seen it in the past from him. And he's just such a smart defender. Uh, such a smart player. 
And that's really important too because Jokic gets all the attention for making the right decision on his pass, but those guys also have to make the right decision on whether they're going to they're going to flash to the corner to take a jump shot or if they're going to cut to the bucket for a layup. That's not exactly an easy choice when you're playing these up-tempo quick games and every possession is 20 seconds. So it's not like you've got a lot of time and in that time that Jokic makes that high post catch um you know he's very patient with the ball and he always makes the right read but it's up to those guys to put them him in a position where he can make that read so i give big props to those guys they were great contributors in that that clippers series that they were able to win and oh i'm just excited for this i think it's going to be amazing are the Nuggets going to double Anthony D- Davis? I think that's another question. I think it's possible. I think I'm going to get around to my prediction now, though, because this video has been running on for a while. High-scoring games is what I expect. And when it comes down to it, I think that you're going to see great performances from LeBron. You're going to see great pre- performances from Nikola Jokic. You're going to see great performances from Anthony Davis, and you're going to see great performances from Jamal Murray. Those are four superstars. Who's the fifth best player in this series? That's very debatable, but in my opinion, it's Jeremy Grant. Who's the sixth best player in this series? I'm going to go Gary Harris here. Who's the seventh best player in this series? Paul Millsap for me. Michael Porter Jr. Torrey Craig. Monte Morris. The Nuggets are deep. They have a lot of guys they can count on to give them good minutes. And out of all those guys I just listed, I'm not sure that I take Kuzma or Rondo or Caruso over any of them. So in the end, I think that this is going to be a high-scoring series. And I think that I trust the Nuggets role players more than I do the Lakers. I think that Nikola Jokic is ready to be the best player on a championship-level team. And I'm going to pick the upset here. I'm going to go with the Nuggets in seven games. This team is the scariest team in the NBA going forward in the future with their... Two superstars under the age of 25 and a third superstar on his way in Michael Porter Jr. But I don't think that they're too concerned about that future. They're not thinking about, oh, we're the team of the future. They're thinking that they're the best team in the NBA right now. And I think that they're going to knock off this Lakers juggernaut. So there's my prediction, Nuggets and 7. Do you think I'm crazy? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what, who you think is going to win this series and how many games it's going to go to. Uh, drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Lots of basketball content here. And ladies and gentlemen, I will see you all again very soon. That's it for me.